Christian Livingstone here, and as you can see, I'm on my zero turn mower, the Dixon 3304. It's, uh, you know, one of the early models. It's got the friction drive, and uh, the video I did uh, on it uh, rebuilding the uh, uh, friction drive transaxle was really popular. And uh, so I'm going to include this project uh, on my YouTube channel because it, it's kind of a follow up to that. I, uh, I mow uh, lawns on three addresses here in this area, including my own rented property here. And uh, this deck is 30 inches, and it's a single blade. And, you know, it does okay, but uh, I've always kind of longed for a bigger deck or a different mower that has, you know, 42 inches, 46, 48 inches, something like that, to save some time. And... Uh, but I've, I've liked this mower, you know, the, the story about how I got it, how I paid for it, how the state was cut out of uh, any revenue about it, it is a, a fun story for me. So, you know, I, I'm kind of fond of this mower and, uh, you know, like something out of heaven, a former uh, uh, neighbor dropped by recently and delivered to me a 42-inch deck from a different uh, Dixon mower that was sitting in the yard of his neighbor. He gave his neighbor eight bucks for this thing. I gave my friend 20 for it. He delivered it as well. He was happy. The neighbor was happy. I'm happy. And here it is. <laughs> Isn't she a beauty? No, really. Really, 42-inch deck. You can see it's uh, missing a couple of pulleys. I've got them ordered. A uh, couple of little spacers as well, and uh, a belt. But uh, no, I uh, I think uh, it'll uh, do well. I notice on other Dixon mowers, the friction drive ones with the 42-inch decks have about 16 or 18 horse motors, and uh, so I think I can get away with it. But in case I it really doesn't jive too well, I do have a bigger pulley that I could put on this 42-inch deck, which will give. Uh, you know, the motor uh, more torque and uh, less stress or strain on it, so uh, the blades won't uh, spin quite as fast, but I think I can compensate if I need to. And then here is the new deck, the 42-inch deck. I've uh, got it down to bare metal uh, almost entirely, and uh, as you'll notice, there's some pitting on the deck and rust on the top. Interestingly, not so much on the bottom. Underneath, uh, it's uh, uh, quite good, but the pitting on the top you can see here is, I think, uh, mostly due to maybe some uh, grass uh, left on top, uh, you know, soggy and just never cleaned off. And also, these uh, low spots for the spindles and the mandrels, you, you notice there's no hole for drainage. It's uh, kind of unusual because on my uh, existing deck, which is a 1995, there are uh, drainage holes uh, all over in the low spots. But on this deck, which is a uh, 2004, no, not so much. They, they didn't think to uh, include that. So I'm going to punch a, a hole or two uh, in uh, each of these uh, little divots here. Uh, Dixon, it's the friction drive. And for people out there uh, who are familiar, uh, uh, there's really nothing like them. You know, they stopped producing them uh, about 10 or 12 years ago. And, uh, you know, I think they're worth having. And uh, especially if you're kind of cheap, you can pick these up cheap. Because uh, people will run them after a few years and uh, not know how to keep them in adjustment uh, too well. And they'll just leave them sitting in their yards. And, and here I'll show you the uh, friction drive transaxle, the cones. Uh, you know, now they're pretty much obsolete uh, and made so by the uh, hydraulic units, the deck. And uh, that's a 30-incher uh, single blade under there. It's got uh, three hangers. As you can see, there's one. It's just a little piece of bent bar stock that looks like channel. There's another and a third one over there. But also... Uh, these uh, guide slots here. This holds the deck from being pulled back by the uh, uh, belt uh, and uh, you know it allows it to go up and down but it holds it uh, you know steady and square from uh, being jerked around too much. There was no uh, a lever engagement uh, for this mounted so you know I, I'm, I'm 
uh, absolutely certain that this had a uh, an electronic clutch mechanism on it which uh, is undoubtedly a better kind of a mechanism for uh, engaging the uh, the blade because you know it'll freewheel uh, and you don't have to worry about tensioning and engaging the belt uh, like you do on the older style it's the older style is more of a mechanical action and this is just a, a clutching action that uh, you know you don't have uh, to tension it it's all, always tensioned but it freewheels until you engage it electronically and then the the blade will spin but uh, so I'm gonna have to stick uh, the uh, another uh, uh, lever and I have one right right here this is from another one that's it's much like uh, that one right there so I'll have uh, enough parts to make this self-contained so that I can just swap this one onto this one. I don't have to cannibalize anything off of this one to make this work uh, theoretically. Kind of a, an innovation and uh, I think in a sense they still are because uh, you know you can get them cheap, you can run them cheap and you can fix them yourself if you're a, a little uh, studious and and pay attention to the literature and uh, like I did. I didn't know anything uh, about them to begin with, but I learned and I'm just sharing that with uh, you know people because there is there is a lack of information on it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm putting it out there and we'll see if this pro project goes well too. I'm sure it will. It's going to be in the way, so I'll probably have to elevate this um and so it clears that because the pulleys are probably going to be up that high anyway so okay so we got the deck uh, out from under the uh, mower uh, we marked the uh, spots uh, let me just show you real quick here these are the spots there's the square so that's a hanger that's that uh, tensioning mechanism another hanger another hanger and uh, before I get too carried away with the hangers, uh, these are the uh, spindles. And the Here's how to get the bearings out. You see, I've already knocked it uh, out a little bit, so you can uh, see that exposed uh, spacer kind of, kind of bobbles around in there once you get it loose. But uh, initially, I, uh, I hit on the, uh, the inner race just to get it started, knocking it uh, out on the uh, underside there. And then when I've got enough room, I'll get, uh, you know, a piece of bar like this uh, and uh, shoot for that uh, outer race so I can knock here. That way, you're not putting stress on the uh, ball bearings. And so here are uh, two bearings that uh, just came out of this one. And uh, as you can see, this is the lower bearing where it'll pick up that moisture. This is the upper one, and I pluck the seal out of it. And even though they might look pretty cruddy uh, on top of the seal, underneath in the bearings they can look pretty good. And a, uh, a zerk fitting in here, and uh, just for your information, you know, these are uh, cast uh, iron or steel, and that's no problem in drilling and tapping. So yeah, piece of cake, just uh, threading right uh, through there, and uh, no sweat. These are the bearings. And uh, I'm going to reuse these bearings. I've cleaned them out. Um, you know, there's six of them, two to each uh, uh, spindle set. So, you know, at 20 bucks a piece, I'm not going to buy all new. I'm just uh, going to pluck these uh, the seals out of the back. And you can see here they are. You pluck them out. They're not really reusable. Sometimes the seals can be put back in if you get the, the right kind, but these aren't the kind. You just rip them out and they're, they're gone. But this is the underside, so we're going to be squirting in the uh, zerk fitting. It'll hit about here, and that way it'll push the grease up in here without that seal in the way, so you'll always be able to uh, hit the uh, bearings with grease. They, they didn't have that uh, on these uh, uh, originally. What they had was uh, a channel. See that little channel right there? That was a drainage channel they had and I sealed that up. I don't want that uh, there anymore. I just put some plastic emblem adhesive in there and, and plug that uh, little uh, moisture channel. What we're going to be doing is going to be better than just you know al allowing moisture. I think it was clogged anyway because uh, you know it was 
had grease and other things in there and it just uh, it, it's not really uh, as effective as, as this. This will be pushing grease in, moisture out, so it's going to be all together uh, that much better. So here we are getting ready to uh, pack one of these and I've already pre-packed the bearing itself and uh, the other one's uh, installed. This one will go on top but before that happens this little spacer gets dropped down uh, in between them. I don't know if that's uh, really that necessary but it's going in. There we go. Let's get a little downward pressure on that baby. Okay, so we'll be watching for that bearing to start pushing out. When it does, we'll know. I'm using some pretty uh, uh, good grease. This is royal purple. It's eh, it's a little costly compared to the typical stuff, but uh, I just use it. I like it. It's well rated, and I don't know, it's purple. Okay, there it is. The bearing starting to push out, as you can see. And so there it is, all filled up with grease by the little zerk fitting. And uh, boy, it feels good, of course. Uh, at the uh, website where I got the parts, those uh, pulleys and a few other parts uh, I got, I determined. Uh, that uh, that deck was a 2004 Zeter model, the 42 inches, everything, you know, looks right. So I said, yeah, that's that's helpful, and uh, that's where I got the parts. And, you know, I could follow the uh, routing of the uh, belts and stuff. And you can see all the prices, and uh, there's no tax uh, here. And... Uh, so I encourage you, you know, go that route. Don't don't buy local where you pay sales tax to those uh, lazy, hostile bureaucrats that, uh, you know, coerce the uh, sellers to be unpaid tax collectors for, for those lazy uh, state, city, and county employees. Uh, you know, keep, keep that money in the productive economy and out of their parasitic hands. So, uh, yeah, that's what I did. I, I bought here, I used this diagram, I di uh, downloaded this diagram and, you know, exploded the view to see the numbers a little better. And uh, uh, it was uh, uh, quite nice. And uh, so that's what I did. Also, uh, I'm considering some different blades, uh, maybe these here. And as you can see, there's no tax here uh, and uh, from other sellers. Oftentimes, you know, Amazon uh, selling uh, things like these will be, you know, in the forefront there. But usually you'll always find, you know, other sellers on Amazon uh, that won't have a, a tax uh, uh, burden incurred. And uh, I always encourage people to, to do that. You know, don't buy, uh, you know, through Amazon directly if, uh, you know, you're in an area where the state demands a, a tax on, on your purchases and, you uh, uh, imposes that uh, burden on uh, uh, sellers to be unpaid tax collectors for the state and uh, uh, usually there is is an option now if you're in an area where the state imposes no sales tax no problem but Amazon's now got a, a, a so-called business presence in uh, you know about uh, I don't know 25 of the US state areas so you know they they are compelled uh, to uh, collect taxes if if you uh, purchase through through Amazon in those places. But usually there is a an avenue to avoid that. So you know take it. I'll I'll even be happy to pay a little more uh, uh, if uh, you know eight nine percent isn't going to those uh, those criminals. So yeah, that's just uh, a little bit uh, of background on. Uh, you know how how to make it all happen. You know how to uh, discover what uh, deck you have, and uh, you know how uh, the parts lay out and the routing and stuff. That's what I did, and it was uh, quite painless. So, uh, uh, other than that, I'll, I'll mention that uh, 
Dixon Mowers, uh, uh, the company, uh, was bought out by Husqvarna in 2006, but Dixon Mowers still continued to be produced uh, until just a few years ago. And, you know, you could see them in showroom floors, and, you know, uh, there was a dealer uh, uh, close by to where I am, and, uh, you know, I would see those mowers uh, in there when I'd pop in once in a while, and uh, but uh, up until a few years ago, no more. They're all Husqvarna. So uh, that's, uh, you know, an interesting point. But also, interestingly, uh, the that same dealer still carries the Dixon parts. And I don't know how many years that's going to go on for, but, you know, it'll probably go on for a little while longer. And uh, undoubtedly, uh, online uh, uh parts, uh, places like this will continue uh, to have parts in supply, but, uh, you know, that's why I'm kind of glad I'm, you know, keeping it old school, not going with the uh, uh, electric clutch or anything like that. All this stuff is, is pretty generalized, the bearings and the shivs, pulleys and stuff, and belts, you know, they're used on all mowers, so you you can always find them just in, in a generic sense. Very few things on here, you know, uh, Dixon only, and, uh, you know, since I do a little welding, I, I'm not worried about, you know, oh, what do I do? They, they don't have that part. Most of the stuff, especially on decks, you can fabricate, and on the frames and chassis and stuff as well. And of course, you know, the uh, the motors are Briggs and Stratton, half of them uh, anyways. It's at seven inches tall from the ground. The same with the deck over there. So I don't have to adjust this one. This one can be welded right there uh, fine. But as you can see, the uh, deck here on this one has a, a lowered section and uh, a typical hanger won't do here. So we're uh, we're going to go uh, uh, expanding these. I, I had some extras, I chopped them up, and this is what I came up with. I'm just going to lengthen them. The pistol grip is a good prop, and your hand doesn't get hot. So anyway, let's get to it. Sure it's nothing to brag about but uh, very simple very quick uh, nothing fancy but uh, you know it's got the uh, the classic TIG ripples and stack of dimes look and uh, you know not that I care it's gonna have paint and uh, it's gonna be fine up under that deck so here we are at the deck uh, the preliminary uh, routing of the uh, uh, belts for the uh, spindles and the blades uh, uh, look great the hangers are where I want them and uh, the tensions all good now this is the tricky part is the blade engagement and uh, you know like I said here's the mark for where the, the handle or the arm will go and you know it's right in the middle of this spaghetti uh, arrangement of uh, belt uh, routings this pull, pulley right here is not the one that came with this this uh, deck had the smaller pulley but uh, you know I'm, I'm not liking this pulley because again I'm gonna be pulling this thing with a, a smaller motor a 12 horse motor and uh, you know if I had the 18 20 horse motor this would be fine but uh, I've got this other pulley it's larger so I'm gonna get more torque out of this the uh, the uh, blade speed will be reduced somehow but you know somewhat but I, I'm thinking that this will be the smarter pulley to use Here's the engagement mechanism, and you know, this is the tricky part, and uh, I shortened it, as you can see, from earlier, and this is, uh, you know, without cutting on the spring and doing anything uh, too radical, uh, it just uh, still is uh, kind of problematic in that, first of all, 
the hanger. It, uh, it, it kind of hangs up close here. But that may not be a problem. I just, uh, I just don't like this uh, spring mechanism shoehorned into all this space here. And uh, so what I'm going to probably do is, uh, again, uh, cut this off. I'll just use the, the head piece there. It's got the right bends and everything. And uh, do away with this for the moment. I, I may revisit that, but uh, I think I'm, I'm going to go, instead of... Uh, a tension spring mechanism. I'll go with a, a compression spring mechanism down at the end. That way I can have some threaded rod in there and uh, that'll give me some adjustment to push it up to where I need it to go and then then I'll have a compression action which will give me know, three quarters of an inch or more to uh, you know get that final belt auto tensioning amount uh, via the spring. See, it's just going to be a cleaner shot to, to it this way. And I'll cut off a, a little piece of this here and I'll, I'll weld on a little bit of a, a bolt underneath. So this will just sit up right top and it'll pivot around as this action is moving forward. So, okay, and here is the initial fitting and uh, uh, testing. I've already run this baby. I'm not going to talk about that too much just yet. Uh, it went fine though. But uh, here is the mechanism. And as you can see, uh, here's that uh, updated uh, engagement rod assembly. And as you see, you turn it and then it breaks over center and holds the uh, uh, idler pulley and tensions the belt just fine. And uh, show you that action on the spring, the compression spring, rather than the tension spring. Now that the uh, blades are engaged and the tension on the uh, uh, driving belt is there, you can see as I pull this, the uh, tension, it gives about a quarter of an inch of, uh, you know, shock absorption. So, you know, if the you know, the deck is bumping around, the uh, bell can transmit some of that into that uh, spring right there. I guess that's what it's for. Anyway, here's the uh, lead to that uh, 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 button switch that, uh, you know, you have to have the uh, blade disengaged and the uh, bumper running up against the button to uh, uh, close that or open that circuit to allow the starting of the the uh, motor and you know it's a safety feature so the blade doesn't turn but I'm not actually using that uh, band clamp uh, as the uh, you know the manufacturer did as a safety mechanism so you know I'll actually get some residual turning of the blade when I start this which it's not a problem for me Maybe when the belt loosens up, uh, there'll be slippage uh, uh, to the point where it doesn't do that. But I'm using a 5 8 uh, uh, width uh, belt on this. And, you know, the half-inch belts, you can use those too, just a little shorter a belt. Uh, and uh, they might allow more, more slippage when the blade isn't engaged. But that's how it goes. And... and uh, the uh, little stop plate for the button on this was on the other side here, and I moved it. Uh, I moved it on the other side here so I could scooch this whole uh, uh, switch uh, forward because you know the round deck came back here uh, a ways and had more places to to fit this up, but uh, I didn't have much room, so that was my solution. Putting the uh, little stop plate right on on the far side so I could scooch this up so that all works fine uh, what else uh, these uh, these keepers for the belt I didn't uh, follow the uh, example from the other uh, uh, 
deck, which was to just have some tabs uh, uh, bolted into the bottom, and then you needed a wrench to uh, adjust them. This, uh, these little uh, uh, keepers are round, so they won't uh, grate on the belt. Plus, they're just bendable. You can bend them up, up, down, forward, back, and uh, that makes uh, an easy, tool-free way to get belts up and around these things. They just get out of your way or they'll do what you want. I'm gonna try a, a new product, this uh, POR15. Apparently it uh, uh, has a, a, a rust preventative in it and uh, it uh, dries to a very hard, hard finish. And uh, usually I use things like this, this uh, uh, epoxy uh, spray, uh, but uh, this goes on with a brush primarily. That's what I'm gonna use. I'll brush it on and I'm probably going to use some of this acid too. This didn't cost me anything. It, I had it on hand this, but I'm going to I'm going to uh, brush on some of this and if it uh, hardens pretty good, uh, I might even run the uh, orbital sander over over the the biggest uh, areas of that to smooth it out because this is kind of pitted. I'm not going to really try to go for uh, you know a smooth, you know, car-like finish, but uh, you know, if it does dry hard, I might uh, run the sander over it, and then uh, it's going to get the top coat with the uh, the spray. And uh, apparently, this stuff does not do well with UV light. And you know, it goes on black and and everything, but uh, in the uh, sunlight, it uh, it fades. So uh, it's getting a top coat. It's recommended. It's not needed, but. Uh, it's recommended, so that's what I'll do. So I'm gonna, you know, deconstruct all of this, uh, get it uh, fairly bright and shiny, and then start uh, laying on the uh, treatment. One more note, uh, while it's still uh, unfinished, uh, you, you may not have noticed, I put the slide gate in and that little uh, chintz uh, uh, sheet uh, down there so it has something to close on. And, uh, you know, I like, I like it better like that, have, uh, you know, full mulching action, no side discharge, just like I did on that other one. I just, uh, I don't like those big uh, deflector ears hanging off of it, and and that way the the winnowing rows or lines and side discharge is just a little cleaner with the uh, uh, gate closure uh, this way. And then, of course, you can open it back up if you want to blow off the sidewalk and stuff. So the recap of what has been done and uh, as you can see the deck uh, uh, has been uh, uh, you know refurbished as far as the finish and uh, you know we kind of talked about the the engagement mechanism here instead of uh, following that uh, same example as the uh, the old one where the uh, rod is uh, in the spring and it's a tension spring we went uh, with this mechanism where it's a, a compression spring and you get the uh, the pushback that way and you get about three quarters of an inch I think I mentioned one quarter of an inch earlier but uh, three quarters of an inch is what I intended to say and it just gives that uh, idler uh, a little more shock absorption for, for some reason and uh, but we've got uh, adjustment on this so you know if I have a, a you know a, a looser belt I can tighten it more and uh, well, what else so Basically, I would think that uh, on just about any deck uh, from whatever manufacturer, you could replace and put it on some other mower, whether it be the tractor or the zero turn, just by, you know, locating the hangers, uh, uh, modifying the hangers, you know, making them taller, shorter, whatever you need to do that way, locating where they are, and any uh, engagement mechanism, same thing, you know. I made this taller, just put it in a tube, and I used that same tab uh, uh, method that they did to uh, not only limit where this stops, it acts as a stopper. Not that it's necessary, but there's no need for this to continue to rotate and bang up against any of this uh, stuff here. So that's a stopper, which also uh, keeps the... Uh, whole arm from riding up until you uh, remove it. You can just uh, take this off. 
there's a locking nut. I have it on there loose just so you can see how that easily comes up, is removed, and then that arm will go past that cam lobe type thing and, and be removed. So that's kind of cool. I thought uh, I'd just follow what they uh, did, how that, how that, uh, you get away from the lobe, then it'll come up. But once you go beyond it and put that uh, rod back on there, it, it can't ride up. So that was kind of cool. And back in it goes. And what else? Uh, yeah, this this was the busiest area here. You know, these hangers, uh, uh, you know, could get in your way. So. Do what you need to do that way. It's it's really not uh, rocket science. You know, you hang the thing in the right spot and uh, you work out your pulley lines and your tensions. And uh, this spring here, uh, I think, is, is the right tension. This breaks over center and it holds. And, you know, you saw the, uh, the deck when it was bare metal on the mower. And uh, I did withhold, uh, uh, you know, my findings, and uh, I'll tell them to you now. The findings are that with this pulley, it's enlarged. It's larger than uh, this motor calls for. Here's the uh, here's the diagram, and as you see on that spindle shaft there, the two pulleys are the same size, and. Uh, the size of those pulleys is four inch pulleys. And uh, that is not a four inch pulley. That is a six and a half inch pulley, which, uh, you know, like I described before, gives more torque, but it reduces the uh, revolutions or the, you know, the blade speed. And uh, so that's a compromise. And uh, the result is, is that with this six and a half inch pulley, this deck, as large as it is in comparison to the other 30 inch deck, does not bog down. This works just like I thought it might. But the compromise is the blade speed isn't really as fast as, as this uh, deck was designed for. So we're going to try to up the uh, rotation speed by putting on a four and a half inch. Uh, pulley on there. Now, see that? This is a four inch pulley. This, I came across this uh, four and a half inch pulley, and I think that will be about the right compromise. I'll get the uh, blade speed back up. It will sit about halfway down, and it's, it's the halfway point in between the uh, belt uh, depth. And so, a four and a half inch pulley is about a four inch or less. Uh, size really where the the middle of each uh, side of the belt rests right in the middle it's about four inches and the same on the uh, six and a half a six and a half inch uh, pulley is about uh, a six inch uh, belt resting spot so the difference between the four and a half and the uh, six and a half is that uh, that two inches so we're going from six to four, or 33% faster with this smaller pulley. And that's what we're looking for. You know, this would maybe make it go a little faster even more, but uh, I think uh, I'll be happy enough with this. If we can get this uh, deck running on this pulley with the 12 and a half uh, horse mower, we'll be good. But if I leave the mower, uh, the motor in the same condition that it's at, I know this would bog down the uh, the motor. You know, if I hit I don't know, a little bit of tall grass, the mower's the motor's not going to have enough power. So, uh, you know, I came across uh, a kind of a cool uh, cool way to compensate for that. Now, you know, I can afford another motor. You know, I can put a brand new 19 horse Briggs motor on that single cylinder Intec uh, motor for under 600 bucks delivered tax-free but you know 
I'm not going to do that. It's not that I'm cheap. I'm just uh, just kind of experimenting. And this is the uh, experiment <coughs> that I've come up with. Look at the puppy. He wants to know who I'm talking to. No, it's not you, puppy. I'm not talking to you. But anyway, here are two heads. And this is the old head. And this is another head. This is a head... This is a head for an 11 horse motor, and this is the original 12 horse motor head. And you can see that the uh, bolt patterns are the same. But what's different is that the 11 horse motor has less volume. And that means if I put this head on my uh, mower, it will have more compression. And that's a good thing. That'll give me more power. Maybe enough. To make that uh, work just fine with the 12 horse motor we're gonna find out and uh, but there are uh, some slight modifications that you need to do to, to make this uh, work uh, but uh, you'll notice that this has a lip on it too so even though this shows to be you know obviously flush this actually has a lip so it's not just here that you're seeing you know the the volume uh, taken up with uh, the metal it's also this lip here. It's uh, it's not here. So there's a little bit of volume under this space. Now, you know, when the uh, gasket goes on there, it'll raise that up a little bit. So that'll be a, kind of a lip in itself. But uh, this should uh, uh, give me uh, more power. But the modification necessary to pull this off well is that... Uh, you know, these bungs or these bosses, you know, they, they stick up at different heights for the cowling and the, uh, the venting or the ducting. And uh, so we, I'm going to compensate uh, for that by just putting some oversized uh, nuts in those spaces to those same uh, depths. And uh, the depth on this is a one nut depth or three eighths of an inch and the other one... These are more like five-eighths of an inch. But not only that, as you can see, all the uh, head uh, bolts will, you know, cinch down, you know, equally on these. And over here, three of them are the same height as, as the other one, but these ones will have to be brought down. And uh, I'll do that easily enough by just taking... Uh, a grinder with a, a cutting blade and I'll I'll lop those babies off and it'll be just like the other one so that is what what uh, we can do and when I say we I mean you and me or anybody else you can do this you can get more more power out of a 12 horse motor uh, by simply just putting on I, I believe even a ten and a half horse head or like this one, the an 11 horse uh, head uh, will bolt right onto a, uh, a 12 horse brace motor with minor adaptation. But not only that, I've got the head off. Here's the valve, the valve seat down on what they call the valve seats. But beyond that, this area right here is called the eyebrow. And that eyebrow uh, normally has a very sharp edge, you know, it's angular, and uh, apparently a, a common uh, slight modification you can do to get better intake and exhaust evacuation of the gases is to uh, slightly grind and sand, and that's what I did. I took a Dremel and, a, and an orbital sander and I softened that edge, widened it, and just made it uh, so it would flow better in and out. So that's one other slight modification that's gonna, gonna hopefully make this uh, all come together and give me the power I'm looking for. Now on this side of the deck, you can see it hangs over a little more than the other side, and that's a good thing. That uh, makes it a lot easier for cutting in under bushes and stuff, which is a time saver, you know? Less uh, weed eating, edging, uh, because you can kind of get under uh, uh, areas that uh, you know I couldn't uh, before without uh, you know running up against a fence or something so but uh, those uh, pulleys there uh, uh, you know from the diagram show a cover and uh, you know I didn't have 
have them. They weren't included, of course. But I think I'm going to make a cover for just this side. The other side, the, the pulley is uh, uh, not exposed like this one. And I'm going to do uh, this little project here just to get more uh, experience and time using the, uh, the welder on AC. So uh, let's go ahead and get to it. You can see I've got it tacked up. and uh, I think everything's set to go. Gas is on. Tungsten looks pretty sharp. Let me change that out just a little. Switch it to the other, other sharper side. And I'll start on this end because uh, it's uh, not going to heat up so quick. Uh, if I do it that way, by the time I get out here, if I, if I started here, this would maybe melt away. But uh, so I'm going to start on what I uh, hope will stay the cool side. stop there and reposition and see what I got going. It's looking okay. It's looking okay. Let me get some uh, fresh filler here. Uh, and this is nothing to brag about so I'll probably just uh, just grind them out. Come on, let's get some focus there. But it is, it's fun, it's challenging. Uh, TIG uh, welding aluminum is uh, uh, pretty challenging and uh, I enjoy it. Christian Livingstone here again and as you can see it's been wet. It's been raining today, it's been hailing today and uh, the end result is there's a, a lot of water, a lot of moisture around. I'm actually off on a, another tangent project uh, before I do that with uh, these uh, little posts up front here. I'm uh, including a uh, 12 volt spreader. Let me put the camera down here to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. And this was about a hundred bucks and it, it took some modifying and adapting but uh, this is what I came up with was a way to just simply slide it on there and there's a hopper that goes on top and, and then there's a a motor underneath here and it's got a little platter and it spins around has fins and it will throw the uh, fertilizer around for me so dog huh? but uh, yeah it turned out real well it's been raining for a couple of days so I, I kind of set aside the uh, deck uh, uh, retrofitting project aside uh, you know it's all bare metal and uh, I, I kind of kept it uh, outdoors but tilted it up against the wall and so it didn't pick up any more rust but anyway I'll just uh, show you the completion of this because I did uh, mention it uh, this spreader is a 12 volt spreader and it just hooks right up to uh, to the battery and it, it comes with a switch uh, and uh, it's real handy and uh, I changed this uh, whole configuration around on the uh, gate uh, uh, regulation and, and opening uh, they had uh, on the other side, on the outside of the uh, hopper, the uh, the gate mechanism. But I just made a, a little wing-shaped uh, uh, gate on the inside because uh, it was easier to just weld it up that way. And they had uh, you know armature on the outside, and you know it was it was 
complex and subject to uh, uh, failure, I think. And some people uh, on Amazon complained that it, it was just no good. And for me, especially with this uh, being uh, mounted up front, this little tiller style uh, actuation uh, works really well. And as you can see, it's got a couple of holes. Now I can get more, but uh, that exposes the holes about uh, halfway, which is uh, plenty. I'd never want to open those fully. Uh, uh, but uh, so, you know, visually you can see, you know, how much you're opening. And this being mounted in front, you know, the pile of, uh, I had some, uh, some very fine uh, Scots fertilizer. It was about the consistency of uh, uh, beach sand. And, you know, this thing, you could dial it in and it would go down real nice and slow, just like an hourglass. It was, it was really quite uh, brilliant to, to use, and I did use it. And so, uh, yeah, I recommend these things, maybe with some modification and front mounted rather than on the back of an ATV, uh, might be worth considering. So that's this part. So now that, uh, you know, the, the rain has uh, passed, it's been about two days of rain, so... Uh, it's time to get back on that uh, deck project. That's one of the functionality issues uh, that I was uh, concerned with. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I'm not concerned with it now, obviously, because I know. But we'll demonstrate that, uh, you know, is the starting process uh, okay? If it grabs the blades or not, does it still start uh, easily? And that has to do with the, the motor uh, issue, too, you know is the higher compression motor harder to start and you know typically they would be and uh, uh, we'll see about that too but so the functionality of the deck does it engage does it start does it uh, cut well enough with that uh, 12 horse only motor on it and then beyond that is uh, you know the quality of the cut is the cut good and uh, that's important to me because uh, you know, I've, I've got uh, lawns I do, and people pay me money, and, you know, I'm not really a, a lawn care guy. I'm not really doing it uh, uh, to make money. I, I don't need the money, but, you know, the one client across the street especially, she's a, uh, an older uh, woman. She uh, actually bought that house, and her and her husband moved into it 65 years ago, right after uh, they got married, and so she's lived in that house for 65 years, and... Uh, Oh, three or four, five years ago, uh, the guy who used to do it lived right next door. He didn't really like to do her lawn, but she didn't seem to have anybody else. And so when, uh, you know, he got sick and uh, uh, couldn't do her lawn anymore, I stepped in and was. Uh, it was really my pleasure to do it. I really enjoy uh, doing it and her, and so uh, it's a it's a good deal. So. Uh, yeah, I, I enjoy doing lawns, but, uh, you know, it's not so much to make money. I, I'm just uh, doing it anyway. So so does the uh, quality of the cut uh, uh, stand up? Is it as good or better than the previous deck, the 30-inch uh, single blade? This is a, a three-blader, and uh, we'll see. So uh, the functionality, the quality of, of the cut, and does that motor really do it you know do I uh, uh, have enough power to not only drive those three blades on the bigger deck but drive the mower itself the mower you know with that bigger deck is now it's easily 30 pounds heavier I think so uh, not only does the motor drive the deck it drives the uh, you know the powertrain too and so uh, you know that's something we'll be watching for are we losing you know the propelling performance on the deck or will it uh, feel just as perky uh, as it was or maybe even better so those three things functionality quality of the cut and the uh, motor output performance those are what we're looking for so let's just take a look at the deck uh, uh, itself right now but uh, oh before we do that I'll mention that uh, We'll do some cutting, and that uh, action cam is mounted on the front. Now, I uh, did that uh, before. I mounted it on the front, but I didn't push the buttons uh, correctly, or it auto went off before I uh, uh, was cutting. I thought I was uh, uh, filming while I was cutting uh, a couple of days ago on that same uh, 
place across the street in the front but in the back I didn't mow in the back so that's where we'll go today we'll mow in the back and uh, maybe I'll include some of those front lawn clips uh, with the camera I'm holding but uh, I, I kind of wished I had been uh, uh, filming with that camera up front because then you could have uh, seen just you know and heard how the motor was responding to the thickness of the grass and the depth of the cut I put on it and uh, uh, I'll tell you it, it uh, performed well so uh, you'll see uh, how well on the back uh, lawn it's a little different kind of a lawn it's got Bermuda and uh, some other grasses but uh, the front uh, is all pure Bermuda so it was a it was a good test it's a good tough turf out up there and uh, very consistent but uh, We'll do that. We'll have the uh, action cam rolling and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, if there is any uh, slowing down of the motor in the thicker spots, which, you know, sometimes that would happen on the, uh, you know, the 30 inch deck without the uh, high compression uh, head on the mo motor. Uh, so, you know, this thing was not immune from getting slowed down or bogged down a little bit in the taller grass, the heavier grass deeper cuts going at a fast speed and I would uh, you know sometimes have to slow down just so I don't you know stress the motor so uh, we'll see if uh, those things are okay here's the deck this is the left side and uh, as you can see it hangs out uh, uh, more than the other side and that's why I'm still fabricating this cover uh, I've got it all done except the mounts underneath the threaded uh, bosses for that but I'll do that uh, later and as you can see the mechanism and the engagement very smooth action there much better than before now I've got the deck all the way up but let me just show you that's the the number one position and you can see how close it is to the ground that may come into play when I start mentioning you know the height of the grass and then how high I'm going to put the deck that's about an inch and a half off the ground the lowest but uh, I may be going up to the two or the three depending on how the grass looks over there that's usually what I'll do a two or a three so you're gonna see how much is coming off there so just so you know those are the, the stops on the deck height now you can see the blade there. That is uh, called a low lift blade, and uh, that's a good thing for for the mower. If if your mower uh, motor is underpowered, you don't want a high lift because that uh, makes the motor work a little harder. So this is a low lift uh, blade, nothing fancy, and uh, also I uh, don't side discharge. I don't bag. I uh, close the gate. I do the, the mulching technique just by keeping that closed and uh, that'll make the motor work a little harder because this is then a, a dead stop. No uh, side discharge but that's that's what I prefer and uh, you know since the grass is hitting that dead stop there is a, a, a winnowing line, a small line on this uh, outboard right side and uh, you know, I overcome that by uh, uh, not just going back and forth, U-turns, U-turns. I'll go down the middle on a, a diagonal cut uh, and then come back around and then come back around. So it's always the right is outboard. Both directions I'm going, both sides. And you, you start down the middle uh, from corner to corner. Now it gets redundant the further you, you get uh, from the center and you keep going around and around and you know it's it's not the most efficient uh, as far as uh, cutting uh, and travel but uh, and I also like that it doesn't leave all those u-turns so it gets rid of the uh, winnowing line and uh, it just looks better I think it takes it's a little a little more redundant but I think it's worth it so uh, the backyard we will we'll do that uh, technique and uh, on contour cuts uh, now nah, you'll you'll usually have a winnowing line because you can't always divide it up perfectly on contour cuts uh, so uh, otherwise uh, like I mentioned the starting process see this 
this may or may not start rotating when we start. So let's do that. Let me just uh, put the parking brake on. The motor is cold, so it's, uh, you know, I'm not cheating here. Uh, I just uh, slid it up into the choke position. Let's start it up. So yeah, the uh, the uh, uh, power belt to the drive did slowly catch. Uh, the uh, the deck belt uh, pulley so uh, you know but it didn't hinder the the starting process and you know that wasn't engaged the uh, the the deck uh, uh, engagement uh, lever wasn't turned you know it won't start that way anyway but uh, you know when you do engage it it'll kick up a, a lot quicker than that so yeah functionality good okay so here we are in the backyard and to see and hear just how the motor is responding to you know the depth of the cut and the performance of the blades and and all those things and you know how much hay this makes because going down to level one will uh, leave some winnowing lines so I'll use that technique I'll start uh, in the middle and come back around go that way come back around and uh, it, you won't see the winnowing lines <laughs> a single pass down to a one with the uh, bigger deck same motor and uh, you know this this deck and uh, motor has more power and it's certainly quicker than my old deck with the same mo motor so uh, yeah a resounding success uh, this I would I wouldn't uh, uh, put a second pass on it this cut is good enough with a single pass mulching and using the technique uh, I described, you, you saw how it worked, how to keep that winnowing line, uh, you know, pretty much uh, out of the picture. You don't, you don't see it. And you don't have uh, all those U-turns at the end uh, of the runs either. You know, I don't like those so much. I like, I like this better. So, uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, now, out in front, uh, two days ago I cut the uh, front. I gave it uh, a single pass and, and kind of looked at it for a minute, but then I did the uh, uh, crisscross, the diagonal in the opposite direction. And so there it is with the second pass, the crisscross cut, uh, brilliant, just brilliant. Uh, I'm really digging the deck. Uh, it, uh, it's performing well. I'm, I'm still kind of tending to think I, I'm mowing with the 30 inch deck so you know I could go even a little faster if I just uh, you know realize that I, I have more deck hanging out because uh, you know I, I probably uh, overlapped uh, uh, probably six inches too much uh, uh, because of that but uh, that's okay you know I'll, I'll start uh, remembering that it's a, a bigger deck and that I can kind of step off a little bit more so that's it. I'm uh, I'm gonna declare a, a, a success here. Hey, Norma. You might be a little careful going so fast. They're gonna give you a ticket. Did it seem like I was going fast? 
you know, I was. This mower is more powerful than it was. And uh, I'm glad you... Uh, what did you do today? I, uh, I got real sneaky and I put a higher compression head from a different motor on it. And uh, boy, let me tell you, it uh, it works. And uh, that, you know, it, it makes it even better, especially on the front. It's kind of a, a showcase, kind of a lawn for me. Uh, and, uh, you know, I know the uh, uh, owner... Uh, appreciates it too so you know it's it's great either way you want to do single passes you want to do uh, uh, you know showcase crisscross cuts contour cuts whatever you want to do uh, I'm happy uh, that uh, this deck has performed so well and you know I can afford uh, to put a 19 horse motor on it but uh, I, I really have no no need to do it no uh, uh, real desire at all. Christian Livingstone here and stop the presses. I've got a new uh, lawn maintenance client and uh, this is kind of a late entry because uh, you know we did the uh, lawn across the street and I routinely do those lawns so they, they never really jump up too high before I'm cutting them but uh, this new uh, lawn maintenance uh, customer is kind of a a la carte impromptu uh, customer. He just lets me know when he wants it cuts and I cut it. And uh, I've cut it before with the 30 inch deck and, uh, you know, I like the, the lawn contour, you know, I can kind of do the crop circles and, you know, we can have some fun that way. But uh, he's been stringing some lines out to his uh, above ground pool and so, you know, he's let the lawn go. He didn't want me cutting, you know, while he's had those things strewn out across the lawn. So uh, it's good and tall over there. And not only that, it's a... Uh, uh, Bermuda and fescue lawn. The previous owner I was friends with, and he had a habit of overseeding the Bermuda with fescue, and ew, that's that's a disaster to me. I, I just don't like it. You know, unless you have a pure fescue uh, or pure Bermuda, I don't like it because uh, you know the the tufts of uh, fescue will grow up faster than the Bermuda. So you know, you cut it, it looks great for two days, and then up comes the fescue ahead of the Bermuda and it, it just looks tacky to me so on the other three addresses that I, I mow I've snuffed out all the fescue uh, uh, and kept it Bermuda. Bermuda's law of maintenance I like it you know fescue has uh, its virtues it, it comes up uh, and looks green before the, the Bermuda and, and it looks green uh, after the uh, Bermuda's gone dormant but uh, Still, I, I like the Bermuda. It uh, it's self-healing. It'll fill in areas. Fescue, not so much. You gotta keep reseeding in dead spots and stuff. But uh, there's a few areas where I will allow some uh, fescue, you know, segregated all by itself, not intermingled uh, under the uh, shaded areas. But otherwise, you won't see the the fescue uh, growing up in any of those three properties that I mow. But over there, yes, it's a. Uh, it's all together, you know, going together. So it's it's a challenging lawn. It's tall, it's lush, and uh, you know, uh, the lawn we did across the street really wasn't too challenging. And so, you know, hopefully some of you have some healthy skepticism, like I usually do, and uh, will have said, well, you know, from what I've seen on that back back on there, that was, that was nothing. You know, he was cutting with the 12 horse mortar and. Uh, yeah, three blades is more challenging, but uh, there wasn't much coming off of that. So we're going to do a more challenging lawn over there. And I'm glad this came up because uh, I was, uh, you know, editing the video and getting ready to sew it up. And uh, that's when he said, okay, now you can fire on, on the lawn over there. I pretty much got my wiring squared away. Uh, and I thought, okay, great. Hold the presses. I'm going to uh, not uh, finish that until I get some of this uh, recording uh, into that and uh, so that's what we'll do uh, it's uh it's kind of early it's about 10 o'clock right now yesterday was uh, 104 degrees so it'll probably be another hot one today so uh, i'm gonna get over there before it gets too hot i'm kind of digging that action cam going on down there and uh it's uh for me it's uh about 11 35 right now so uh I don't know what the size of this is, but uh, I'll time it. Uh, here I'll uh, start up and we'll get mowing and uh, we'll see uh, uh, how fast uh, it goes. Uh, 
if uh, a single pass is enough uh, to give a pretty good finish cut on something like this going down to a number two so that's taken off quite a bit of grass and even if the cut is uh, good enough uh, you know it may make a little little more hay and winnowing lines than I like so uh, I may just put a second pass on it just to clean that up so <laughs> Okay, there it is at a single pass. It's uh, about uh, 10 to uh, noon, so we started at 11.35. That's uh, 15, 17 minutes or so. And so, uh, quick. That was very quick. And, uh, you know, you can see from the uh, action cam, uh, there was a couple of spots, especially up here at front, where the uh, motor did huff and puff a little bit. I slowed down, and uh, some of these initial... Uh, uh, lines and passes I gave it a, a second cut and a, an overlap uh, so I could define those and get through those uh, tougher spaces uh, uh, initially but uh, for the rest no that's all a single pass and uh, even with the 30 horse motor uh, going down to a two like this uh, would have been challenging uh, at least as challenging probably more so this did a little better I believe I know that's a subjective kind of uh, evaluation but uh, it did just from the sights and sounds and and going down to the uh, level two from you know a six easily uh, uh, the grass was wet in the back uh, it did quite well and uh, as you can see you know taking off that much in a single cut does uh, leave some hay and some winnowing lines so I'm gonna go over this again uh, you know the the cut is good enough it's uh, uh, you know, if I wasn't taken off so much, this would have uh, undoubtedly been fine for most customers, uh, but uh, it's not good enough for me. Uh, and there it is with the second pass. It's about uh, five minutes afternoon, so it took uh, another ten minutes or so, and uh, as you can see, uh, it went a lot faster, and uh, 
uh, down at the end, if the action cam was uh, running, you saw me going round and around in the same direction around the tree and uh, for the most part around the pool too. I just kept going around and uh, uh, elongating the, the circle uh, and uh, uh, that kept the winnowing row always outboard so it never showed. I always overlapped just a little so that it always kept pushing. But <laughs> areas here where you you know you go up and back you don't keep looping around and around so you you keep it uh, uh, outboard uh, you know you'll get it every other uh, rung you'll get that winnowing line so you'll see uh, three lines here not a line you know every row but every other one because you turn around and come back but not around that tree I went around that tree and uh, the winnowing row was always outboard. I did the same on the pool, except for the last corner there. Just uh, it got a little redundant, and you know nobody's looking back there anyway. For so, wow, what a fun and successful project this has turned out to be. And uh, you know the the three questions uh, I, I think we've answered: uh, uh, Does it function well? And yes, it functions as well or better than before. And also, what was the quality of the cut was it improved the same or poorer than before now you haven't seen me cut with the 30 inch deck but let me tell you the three blades with that motor performed and cut better than the single blade so uh, a resounding success there and also the output of the motor you know I don't know if anybody's ever asked uh, the question but I think we've uh, answered it that uh, you can make a 12 horse motor designed for a 30 inch uh, uh, deck single blade you can make it powerful enough to propel not not just the deck but the the mower itself uh, uh, effectively so you can get a lot more output out of a 12 horse motor you don't need to buy a new motor and uh, let me tell you on that yard over there this thing with that same motor and the uh, uh, new head performed as well and even better than the single uh, blade 30 inch deck it performed better sure it slowed down in the uh, thickest heaviest stuff and I had to slow the speed down but the 30 inch deck did the same thing and you know I would uh, cut the uh, uh, lawn over there at uh, about a three but I pushed it and went at the two when this was uh, as high as I've seen it and uh, it performed better than the 30 inch deck uh, would have so uh, in those three areas, uh, uh, success, 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 and also uh, 
the time saver, just the element of the uh, deck being a time saver because it's larger, of course. And, uh, you know, not only that, that's this whole process is going to enable me to enjoy this mower longer. I, you know, I like the mower. I, I could have upgraded, got something else. Uh, uh, but, you know, I'm very happy that I don't have to. I can keep this mower, enjoy it. It performs better, cuts faster, and uh, it's been a fun project. The cost was uh, not bad. Uh, I'm guessing it was about 250 to 300 bucks, all things considered, paint finish, everything uh, uh, included, uh, about 250. And uh, I'm so confident of the new performance of this motor on that uh, mower that uh, I bought some uh, new blades. And these are uh, uh, three-in-one mulching blades. They're higher lift. They've got the fingers for more mulching action. And there's more of a cutting surface. They're heavier. They're wider. But I'm confident uh, that uh, uh, the motor will handle them. And uh, so maybe they'll make less hay uh, with these blades. A little more mulching action, finer particles, uh, maybe a little less winnowing line. But uh, this baby can handle it. Let me show you. Let me show you. That baby's uh, uh, been tested and uh, uh, proven to be uh, uh, quite good. And one more uh, uh, point I'll uh, mention uh, before I go is if you do come across, uh, you know, a 42-inch deck and you have, uh, you know, a flathead motor like uh, that one there and there is a... Uh, an electronic clutch and you decide oh yeah the electronic clutch sounds much better than what was up under there before and you know this guy says uh, you know you can do it and so I'll do it and you know you'll discover if you don't do your own due diligence you'll discover that these uh, flathead motors uh, have an alternator on them that uh, puts out about uh, two or three amps and I've changed the, the alternator on that and it's it's just a little half moon looking thing and uh, uh, it doesn't put out enough amps to uh, uh, run a an electronic clutch they need uh, a nine amp alternator and uh, I don't know you may be able to put a nine amp alternator under that flywheel I, it might be a full circle and not just a half moon so uh, you know maybe you can do it but uh, I believe all of the uh, overhead valve, single cylinder, Intec, uh, Briggs motors do have a, uh, an alternator that will uh, do that. It will put out the uh, 9 amps so you can uh, put a deck on there and use an electronic clutch and that would be an upgrade. So, uh, you know, it, it may be doable but uh, it may not. So there it is. Uh, you know, if you want to try it, try it. You, you just might get lucky. <laughs>